Welcome back to another episode of our Drift Car Build-Off presented by Spec Clutch and Coyo Rad. It's a big day at the shop here. We're finally done with engine mods, which means we can move on to suspension and brakes. Right into my wheelhouse now, PT. It's time for the suspension. These are, of course, Fortune Auto coilovers. These are their 500 series. Uh, generation 6, they are now up to Generation 7. We've been left in the dust already. If you jump on their website, there's some information on there about differences in generation, but they've just kind of evolved their internal damping. I believe the Gen 7s have a greater range of adjustability than these will, but this year, these are still 24-way adjustable, uh, single adjustable dampers. So basically, we're going to be adjusting rebound performance and maybe a little bit of compression too, but primarily with single adjustables, you're changing rebound behavior, which is gonna let you adjust the attitude of the car or the, the handling balance of the car. Um, we went with 10K springs front and rear based on our console with the guys at Fortunato. They're really good about that, by the way. If you have some uncertainty about what spring rights might suit your car best, they have a form that they ask you to fill out that, that you basically tell them exactly how your car is modified, what you're gonna use it for, what tires you're gonna run, what alignment specs you're gonna run, like give them as much detail as, as you can, and they will recommend a spring rate that they think is best suited for that based on their many years of experience in setting up both race cars and drift cars. Matter of fact, they sponsor quite a number of uh, pro drift guys in Formula Drift, so they know what they're doing when it comes to this stuff, and uh, we kinda know what we're doing when it comes to installing suspension. We've done this a lot, Pete. <laughs> this is a Max Truck car. Three nuts up top. We got a bolt to hold it to the to the, the 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 knuckle here, and that's really all there is to it. Yeah, this is probably one of the easiest installs. Yeah, even I can do it, which is why I'm wearing gloves because I can throw that up in there hole and throw a few nuts on it. So I think I'm gonna go in the top. You want to go top first? Yep. And then we will go from there. All right. Wow. Bottom bolts in, and up top we got three nuts to hold it to the shock tower, and that's. Really all there is to it other than hooking up the sway bar end link, which we'll show you momentarily. Time for the front sway bar, which as you can see is in Eibach signature red color, which means it's an Eibach bar, everybody. Shocking, I know. This is a 25 milli millimeter tubular bar. So the diameter measurement doesn't necessarily indicate how stiff it is, since with tubular bars, it really comes down to wall thicknesses and other sciencey type stuff. But Obviously this is a stiffer bar than the old one. And as you can see on the ends here, it has three positions in which we can set it. So uh, the longest setting here would be softest and it would get stiffer as we work our way in. It's designed to bolt right up in the factory location with the factory brackets, but they do supply these very nice polyurethane bushings. As you can see, they've got a, like a canvas like lining on the inside, which I've never seen on a yeah, poly bushing before. Either. It's pretty interesting. I think it's designed for quietness and uh, also thinking that that material will kind of like soak up the, the uh, what is this, grease? It's not grease, it's the lube, lube, lithium. Whatever. Yeah, it's, it, maybe it's like a that. lithium grease. Yeah. Wow, all these installs are so easy DP when everything is off the car. This would probably be a, a little bit more difficult of an install job if, uh, if you've got everything on your vehicle. But as you can see, uh, this thing's gonna fit up quite nicely. I still have to put the end links on, but you may be wondering why we are putting in a sway bar like this, and that is to control body roll. Obviously the stiffer, the better in that sense, and also to make sure we can adjust oversteer and understeer. So the three settings, we can kind of like dial it in. If the car feels like it's pushing a little bit too much, we can uh, soften up the front sway bar and continue to do that to fine tune our suspension settings for some drifting action. I don't know about you guys, but I hate wheel bolts. I don't know why the Germans love to use wheel bolts where you have to put the wheel on and then line the holes up in the wheels with the holes in the hub here and then put this bolt in and get it threaded and it's, it's so short. short and fiddly and if the deep dish wheel, you know, you can't get it in there and it's, I just find them to be a struggle. I think it's kind of a, an awkward and flawed approach compared to a wheel stud. Thankfully though, our friends at Bimmer World have a solution. And matter of fact, they have three solutions. This being the first one, this is their street stud. It is a 75 mil long M12 by 1.5 bolt with this nice black uh, zinc uh, nickel electroplated coating on it to keep it corrosion free and looking pretty. 
And uh, as their name for it would imply, they really design these for street customers, although they do apparently have some racer customers that use them because they're more budget friendly, but they're really not rated for the heavy loads you would see in a race car stud. So um, this is though their most affordable option. As you can see, it's got this nice bullet nose on it, which makes it really easy to feed the nut on. It even has like an Allen head inlay in the end here to make it easy to, to uh, install them. I should also mention that all three of their wheel stud kits come with very specific instructions, each of which are different because the grades of the bolts are different. So you need to follow their instructions carefully to install them properly. So that's uh, exhibit A. Let's move on to exhibit B. Next up, we have Bimmer World's uh, race stud. This is a premium product that I guess comes at a higher price point than their street stud. As you can see, it's a little bit longer. It's 82 mil instead of 75 mil. And most notably, it has also got a much uh, broader shoulder area than the street stud. So you can see, this is a typical failure point. So they've, they've given a lot more uh, girthiness in the shoulder so that that's a less likely failure point. It's also made of a stronger material. This is a heat treated chromoly steel that's shot peened and Magnaflux inspected. So they know that this thing is gonna be very durable. And it has different insulation process. As you can see, it doesn't have that uh, Allen key hex in the head there. So you got to double nut install these. So here's the race stud that I just showed you. And here's their premium race stud that I'm going to explain to you now. If we have a look at the shoulder area down here, you can see that the shoulder on the premium race stud is actually a larger diameter. That's so that this whole stud is machined down from a thicker or larger diameter material than their normal race stud. And what that does is give you a, a larger base or like a broader shoulder in this area where it seats on the hub and that prevents a stress riser from forming during installation. So this is your, your strongest option as far as preventing that stress riser and, and having it machined out of the same uh, heat treated chromoly steel that's shot peened and uh, Magnaflux. I think this one's actually double Magnaflux inspected. So this is their top dog. And just like the regular race one, you can see they both have these bullet head designs which make it very easy to install the wheel nuts on. And in fact, we bought this as a kit with their black wheel nuts, which thread on there very nicely. So that's our solution for wheel studs. We're going big on this one. Premium race studs from Bimmer World with black nuts. Let's get these installed. First step here is to hand install and tighten our studs, you will also notice that the Bimmer World studs do come with some thread locker on them. So you don't have to put any of your own on. They also supply these nuts that we wanna go, I think about half an inch from the end there and then grab our second nut, slide it on. And now we are gonna torque these two nuts together to 70 foot pounds. So I'm gonna set this up to 70 here. Hold one side. Oh yeah. Just snuck it in just, there. I was, <laughs> almost had to let go there. So now that that is at 70 foot pounds, we are gonna start tightening this in. However, because this hub is loose uh, and we don't have the brakes and everything on, this does pose a little bit of a problem. If you have the brakes on and whatnot, it'll be much easier. You can just have a friend hold it while you screw this in. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is just use a pry bar. Nice, like that. And it's not on the stud, everyone. It's Don't not. Panic. Don't it's panic. not. It's clearly not on the stud. So the idea is just to bottom this out and then park it down. Yep, so we just get to the bottom here. And now we go to 65 foot pounds. Bimmer World says between, um, I think it was 50 and 80 foot pounds. So it's a quite a quite a spread. We're going right in the middle for it. And we are going to start torquing here. There we are. I should have also mentioned, make sure to clean your uh, threads and whatnot. So I did brake clean these and made sure that they're clean of any type of debris because obviously that's gonna affect the way that the torque value works. But so I have now done two of these. We're gonna do three more and then we can get on to doing the brakes. Another advantage of installing wheel studs, as we've just discovered, is when you shear off the bolts that hold the rotor onto the hub. Which we didn't do. Which we didn't do. The, the car came pre-sheared. 
these studs will now hold up our rotors. This is a StopTech sport rotor that I am blindly putting on here. And look at that, boom, right on the hub. She can't get off there now. Obviously you guys know about StopTech. This is their sport line of rotor, which is a high quality rotor, certainly capable of surviving track duty as we've discovered on several, several of our other cars. We're gonna equip it with a sport brake pad too which I think should be more than sufficient for drifting duties. Although we'd be curious to hear in the comment section what you guys use for brake pads on your drift cars. If you like a really aggressive, like, you know, high mu race pad, or you prefer a you know, more progressive pedal feel out of more of a street pad. We're really not too sure what the hot setup is for you hot boys out there. So let us know about it. We're gonna start, stick with the sport pad, which we know can take some track duty, but it's still a very, uh, and it's got good initial bite. Good too. initial bite and it's still perfectly friendly on the street. It's not super dusty or anything like that. So we think it's a really good like uh, street track pad. So that's what we're going with there. So I'm now installing our StopTech sport pads. And the one thing I'll mention about them and what I really like in general about a lot of the StopTech brake pads is they do come with new hardware. So we got new rubber boots, a clip. As you can see, the old one was really crusty. It was ready to, to be thrown out, so I, I do appreciate that. The other thing that we have also upgraded, as you can see here, stainless steel brake line from StopTech as well. And really, we just do this for safety reasons. The rubber can eventually fail on you, especially ones that are this old, but more so you also get the better modulation and a consistent brake pedal with uh, stainless steel brake lines. What we didn't upgrade though, or change out or paint for that matter, is our caliper and it is looking really rusty. I mean, I think it's gonna be the one eyesore on here because everything else is so new and nice. Should have painted it Phoenix Gold, PT. No, I don't know, I don't know about that. <laughs> that would have been uh, like a late 90s move, Fast That's and right. Furious An era. auto salon style. Yeah, I don't think we're going that, down that road yet. Before we call it a wrap, I think, uh, why don't we throw a wheel and tire on here and see what all the newness is really looking like. It's kind of exciting to put wheels back on this car too because yeah. it has been a bit of a long haul on this engine rebuild and I know, everything. this car so, has needed the full makeover. It has, so that's my chance to use these Bimmer World black nuts on a stud. The way a proper wheel and tire package should be bolted up. None of this wheel bolt nonsense. So uh, thank you very much Bimmer World for hooking it up on this good stuff, these premium studs. All right. Man, Wheel does that up. look good or what, it DP? It is looking really nice. I like the- Full uh, race spec. I like black nickel finish that Bimmer yeah. puts on these studs. Gives it a real racy look. And uh, I like these Koenig Ultraforms a lot too. I think they have a really nice look to them. And in these 18 by nine and a half, what, plus 35 yep, offset? They do have a nice little bit of dish to the face of them, which gives them an aggressive look. And these are part of uh, Koenig's flow formed lineup of wheels. That's like their highest performance uh, technology. It is, as we've talked about within the 350Z series and some of other series where we've run these flow formed wheels, it's a cast wheel that is then uh, formed, thus the name flow formed, with a die that sort of pulls the barrel out into its final shape. And in the process, it uh, changes the structure of the aluminum and makes it much stronger. And as a result of it being stronger, you can use less material, therefore you have a lighter wheel. It's also got really good uh, deformation resistance. So you're pounding curves at the racetrack or pounding potholes on the street. These will take that beating much better than a typical cast wheel can before they crack. They'll bend before they break, which is I think a good safety feature. Uh, and for the tires, we have gone with the same tire package that we went with on the 350Z. So you can uh, link to that story in the top right corner there or that video in the top right corner there. If you want more information on the tires, we'll talk more about them too when we're actually testing at the track. But We've gone with a staggered setup from Vestino. This is the uh, Gredge tire in the front, which is a grippier compound than we're running the rear. It's the Acrova compound in the rear. And I think our friends at Vestino Canada actually still have a sale going on on last year's stock of tires with some crazy good prices. So if you live in Canada and you're looking for a smoking deal on some really good track capable tires or drift tires, go check them out at Vestino Canada. All right, PT. I think that is officially a wrap for the day. I think so. What do you say we- We are uh, done, DP. We do our usual, uh, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe and hit the no notification bell. Do all those things that YouTube wants you to do so we can survive and make a living. And if you wanna help us survive and make a living, we also have options including Patreon. You can check our page out there or 
There's even this new uh, join button on YouTube where you can sign up and donate a few bucks to us on a monthly basis there. And they have, uh, YouTube has its own like, kind of like reward system. And we're working on some new rewards for that, which may involve things like uh, live chats or live, um, live streaming with just our YouTube members. So keep an eye open for that. We'll, we'll let you know when we're gonna start doing that. All right, guys, we also have speedacademy.shop for hats and hoodies and even some go fast parts, so go check that out too. What have we here, PT? What have we here? Just a mess. Just spilling brake fluid all over the shop. No Just big deal. Just a bit of a mess here. That's what I do best. Make messes everywhere.